the Green New Deal, a war against energy. In early February, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez unveiled her Green New Deal to great fanfare and media hype. The plan calls for a massive transformation of the U.S. economy by moving away from fossil fuels to 100% clean and renewable energy in 10 years. And the air was so polluted coming back I could hardly breathe. And that was on a Sunday in Beijing when factories supposedly were shut down. The, the air is so polluted over China, you can't believe it. Are they part of the Paris Accords? No way. So, I mean, we're going to cut down all of our energy in order to have a green uh, a, a planet. And the Chinese aren't a part of it. The Russians aren't part of it. And maybe there are many other countries like India that aren't part of it. So what are we doing? Well, we're crippling our economy in order to uh, do something for the planet, which is going to be inconsequential. And we've got to remember, I mean, that this, this is a fanaticism. Again, we talked earlier about a religion. This is a kind of a religion. This whole idea of climate, climate change, sure, we've got climate problems. But we in America can't limit all of the resources we have and cut back on our uh, energy and cut back on our manufacturing capability and pull a lot of people out of work and run up our costs of gasoline and in, in order to uh, help a climate that is going to be polluted by these other countries. And, you know, the big thing is that if you want a nice, clean, burning energy, it's natural gas. And we ought to spend more time on that instead of trying to shut it all down. Terry? Well, still ahead. The... Well, here's the uh, an article about it and the New Green Deal outline. And here's the actual House bill here. Uh, I'll set the, put the information in the description box below so you can check it out. Texas is seizing up as the state is weathering some of the coldest temperatures it's seen in years. What we're seeing this is was that February 14th and 15th. thermal power stations, which include coal, gas, and nuclear, have equipment literally freezing over, seizing up, and that is contributing to some of the power failures. We also see a uh, wind turbine problem with generating power. They can draw power from neighboring states in order to meet that need. Texas is a little bit more limited in doing that because it runs an independent grid, one that has some connections but not as much connection to neighboring states. It's a grid system that's not designed for these extremely cold temperatures that we're used to seeing in places like New England and the Midwest. This is a completely different region that is really built to deal with big summer heat waves and making sure the air conditioners stay on, not with these really deep cold snaps. So what grid operators do um, is issue rolling blackouts where the lights turn on for 15 minutes, turn off for 15 minutes or something like that in order to make sure that you know some people are getting some power some of the time. It's really to manage this crisis and try to get through it. It's really a dangerous situation in Texas as people are turning to some unsafe means, in some cases, to heat their homes. Um, a woman and a girl actually died from carbon monoxide poisoning in Houston after leaving a car on um, in their garage. At least 12 people in total in four states um, have died due to the effects of this record-shattering cold. Well, certainly our grid systems are, being, are going to be tested by um, all the different As millions of people endured a third day without power, former Texas Governor Rick Perry on Wednesday defiantly proclaimed that Texans would spend even longer in the freezing cold if it meant supporting Democrats who want to address climate change with new regulations. Texans would be with... Texans would be without electricity for longer than three days to keep the federal government out of their business. Perry, who also served as the Trump administration's energy secretary. 
Like many other Republicans, Perry also falsely blamed frozen wind turbines for the mass outages when a widespread failure to invest in winterizing power sources and frozen natural gas pipes played a far bigger role. As millions of Texans struggled to stay warm amid massive Cold weather power outages, Governor Greg Abbott also directed his ire at the frozen wind turbines. 